Well, I want to tell you a fun story. Yeah, yeah. Traveling with the Royal Ballet. We're traveling in Boston. They're doing Romeo and Juliet with Fontaine and Nureyev. So in the act where she's already supposedly dead or whatever in the story, and Rudy Nureyev comes down and looks at her, and it's so dramatic, and the music is so moving, and everybody is so into it. And the music begins to change in texture. And at one point, maybe there's a clarinet, a violin, and some spar instrument still carrying what they should be hearing. And then at one point, nothing. In full voice, Margot Fontaine is a live performance in Boston, says, Rudy, I thought I am really dead or I have grown deaf. Well, what happened is the electricity in the pit went out completely during the performance and the musicians were trying to keep it moving with what they could remember, but it was beginning completely and did fall apart. They had to drop the curtain. Everybody was laughing like hell. And then we explained that there was an electric problem. Sorry, nothing we could do about it. We'll start with the second act all over again, and let's all get in the mood again. Giving you a funny story of a reality with the great Fontaine. <laughs> yeah. But to hear her say, Rudy, <laughs> either I am deaf or I've <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> yeah. So tell me about other instrumentalists like Rostropovich and who else? Rostropovich, uh, yeah, David, David Oistrach. Dave Astra. Oh, David Oistrach. Yeah. What is he like? Is he a serious guy? He was one of the few angels. I traveled with him on many tours. To give you an example of what he was really like, he had a very devoted wife. I would say she was a very intelligent woman, but obsessed and a little bit of a nut. <laughs> very concerned with mistrust of people. So if we checked out of the Essex house and they had the baggage, which you normally leave in the check room, because we we're coming back, we had a suite for him and everything. No, we have to travel with all our baggage, whatever we bought. I had to travel with them, with all the, I could say, junk, with two taxi cabs and us, three cabs to get to the airport. Because we had all that stuff she didn't want to leave. So it's an obsession. It's a counterpart of that Soviet thinking then. You don't trust anyone. Apparently, it was very sad. We were in New York, and there was a filming of three Beethoven sonatas. The pianist was Richter, David Oistrach, violinist. I'm with them. Hurok was in Los Angeles, so he asked me, certainly, to look after them. And for food, if David wants to go, take him to the wherever the best restaurant, because Richter and his wife had something planned, so it was not a problem. So to go to Pavillon, or to the next, or to the Côte Basque, whatever, I, I said, David, we've had a tough day. Now, we go to the hotel, clean up if you want. We can go to the Pavillon, Côte Basque, whatever. His wife, in the middle of all this, in a panic, says, Oi! 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 She disappears. Okay? We're talking a little bit. He's used to this. I'm not. She comes back in about 20 minutes with a paper bag, and it's filled with corn on the cob, which around the corner you could get for 20 cents a corn. 
So she brought a whole bag of corn. Well, Tamara, we're going to court Baska. Niet. So David looked so kindly at me. He said, Max, you you don't understand. For us to eat corn in January on the cob, or in America in January anywhere, is such a treat. It couldn't be better. Let's just have dinner on the corn. He wouldn't go to the fence. He was not interested at all. A real person. A real person. His son is not. Sorry about that. His son is like his mother. Wherever he would go, he wanted the money in cash before intermission is over. You can't do that at university because it's dangerous and it's just not procedure anymore. I won't play unless I have cash. I said, Igor, you're not going to have a career in this country. I will. Well, he didn't. I had him with the Indianapolis Symphony Orchestra. I got there because I sensed there's going to be a problem. So different from his father. He's been living off of his father's name in Belgium. The queen there revers him as if his father were there. And he's feeding off of that. And I tell you, he had, in Indianapolis, I sense there's a problem. I flew to Indianapolis. It's my own money, my own time. Uh, Igor, what's happening? You seem upset and they know you're upset. Well, what do you mean? I got in the hotel and they put me in something on the top of the hotel, a lot of glass and everything. So I looked in the closet and the cost per night was staggering. I wouldn't pay such money. I said, who expects you to pay anything? Well, who's going to pay for it? I said, you have your contract. It's included that you are their guest. Well, I don't care. I don't like that. I called and I said, give me the cheapest room you have. Is this building an image? You see, I'm thinking of the mother with all that, two more taxis. Same thing. I said, Igor, when will you learn? I keep telling you. You're only making enemies wherever you go. Well, if so, I won't play for them. I said, nobody cares. Is he a good player? Not that great by intonation. I sat with him and his father next to me during a rehearsal with the Moscow Chamber Orchestra. And the intonation was not great during the rehearsal. So I'm pushing David next to me because we're both suffering at moments. So I said, you know, speak to him. He says, I can't. You talk to him. We knew what we were talking about. So that, that's, that's the way it was. So in Indianapolis, Every time the person drove us to the rehearsals or the performance, she kept on being asked, you'll be sure then take me before my airplane to the bank. She said, you told me this already two times. Well, I just want to assure that you do that. Who wants a guest like that? So when asked about Igor Roystrach, I would say that there are many more without the ticket drawer name, but they won't get a break.